Hello and welcome to Apache Kafka tutorial at Learning Journal. In this session, we are going to explore Kafka Partitioner. I already explained that Kafka Partitioner is responsible for deciding partition number for each message. We also discussed the behavior of default partitioner. Let me quickly recap the default partitioner. The default partitioner follows these rules. If a producer specifies a partition number in the message record, use it. If we don't hard code a partition number, but we provide a key, choose a partition based on a hash value of the key. If no partition or key is present, pick a partition in a round robin fashion. So you can use default partitioner in three scenarios. You don't care about which partition your data is landing. But you want the partitioner to distribute your data evenly, you will use the third rule of default partitioner. If you already know which partition do you want to send the data, you will hard code it and use the first rule of default partitioner. If you want your data to be distributed based on your key, you will specify a key in your message. But there is a catch with the key. And that is because the way hashing works. The hashing guarantees that a key will always give you same number. But it doesn't ensure that two different keys will never give you same number. So for example, if you have three tables and you want to send all rows from these three tables to three different partitions. I mean data from table A goes to partition 0 and data from table B goes to partition 1 and so on. One of the obvious thought is to send table name as a key. But that will be incorrect. Because table A and table B can give the same number after hashing. I will show you this happening in the example. So it is better that you manage this translation of table name to a partition number in your producer and hard code your partition number with the message. Another alternative is to implement a custom partitioner and use your partitioner instead of using the default one. I will show you an example for custom partitioner as well. So that's the first precaution with the key. There is another catch with the key. The partition number is the mod of the hash value of the key and the total number of partitions on the topic. So if you are increasing the number of partitions for your topic, the default partitioner will start returning different numbers. That may be a problem if you are relying on your key for achieving a particular partitioning. With these two problems, I don't find a key to be of good use in making desired custom partitioning. So if you want a particular type of partitioning, the only option is to create your algorithm and implement it in a custom partitioner. So let's make an example use case and implement a custom partitioner. Assume we are collecting data from a bunch of sensors. All of the sensors are sending data to a single topic. I plan 10 partitions for the topic. But I want three partitions dedicated for a particular sensor named TSS and seven partitions for rest of the sensors. How would you achieve this? You can solve this requirement and any other type of partitioning need by implementing a custom partitioner. Let me show you the code for solving this problem. So first thing is a producer. We created several producers earlier. I created a new one for this example. So this is the code. It is like earlier. I have already explained everything. So only difference is that we are setting two new properties. The first one is partition.class property. Since we are not using default partitioner, we set this property to the class name of our custom partitioner. I will show you the code for this custom partitioner class in a minute. 
the next property is speed dot sensor dot name is not a Kafka configuration property. It is a custom property. We are using it to supply the name of the sensor that requires a special treatment. I don't want to hard code this string TSS in my custom partitioner, so I am using a custom configuration method for passing a value to the partitioner. Rest of the code is straightforward. We send some messages for various sensors, then we send some messages for TSS sensor. Now let's look at the partitioner. So you need to create your class by implementing partitioner interface. And you must implement three methods in your class. Configure method, partition method and close method. So the configure and close methods are like initialization and cleanup methods. They will be called once when you instantiate your producer. You can initialize things in configure method and clean up things in close method. So in our example, we don't have anything to clean up. However, we have something for the configure. We want to find the sensor name that requires three partitions. My producer is sending that name as a custom configuration. So this line is extracting the configuration value and setting it to a private variable so that I can use it later. The partition method is the place where all action happens. The producer will call this method for each message and provide all the details with every call. So the input to the method is topic name, key, value and cluster details. We have everything that is required to calculate a partition number. All we need to do is return an integer as a partition number. This method is the place where we implement our algorithm for partitioning. I am applying my algorithm in four simple steps. Let's look at the step one. The first step is to determine the number of partitions and reserve 30% of it for TSS sensor. Assuming that I have 10 partitions for the topic, this logic will reserve 3 partitions for TSS. So the next question is, how do we get the number of partitions in the topic? That's simple. We got a cluster object as an input and the method partitions for topic will give us a list of all partitions. Then we take the size of that list, that's the number of partitions in the topic. Then this variable sp is the 30% of the number of partitions. So if I have 10 partitions, sp will be 3. That's all about step 1. So this one is simple. If we don't get a string key, throw an exception. We need key because key tells us the sensor name. Without knowing sensor name, we can't decide that the message should go to one of the three reserved partitions or the other bucket of the seven partitions. Now let's look at the step three. So step three and step four are to determine partition number. If the key is equal to TSS, then we hash the message value, divide it by three and take the mod as partition number. Using mod will make sure that we always get zero, one or two. So these messages that actually belong to TSS sensor will go to partition zero or one or partition two. If key is not equal to TSS, then we divide it by 7 and again take mod. The mod will be somewhere between 0 and 6. So I am adding 3 to shift it by 3. This all is just pure maths and I hope you get that. You might be wondering that in step 3, I am hashing message value and in step 4, I am hashing message key. Let me explain that. 
in step 3 every time key will be tss so hashing tss will give me same number every time and all the tss messages will go to the same partition but we want to distribute it in first three partitions so i am hashing the message value to get a different number every time in step 4 instead of hashing message value again I am hashing key. That's because I wanted to show you that why you should be careful if you want to use a key for achieving a particular partitioning. I wanted to demonstrate that different keys can land up in the same partition. We will observe that behavior by executing this example. So let's compile and run the producer. Okay, I have already created a topic. The name of the topic is sensor topic. Let me describe it. So we have 10 partitions in this topic. Right? Starting from 0 to 9. We want to send TSS data to partition 0 to 3 and others to go to rest of the partitions. Let me execute sensor producer and we will see how messages are being partitioned. Okay, we have the result. So these are 10 TSS messages. You can see that these are distributed in partition 0, 2 and 1. That's what is we wanted. Now let's come to these other messages. These are distributed starting from 3 to 9. That's what we expected. Now look at these messages. This one and this one. They both are in same partition. Partition number 6. But for both of these messages, the keys are different. This is happening because hashing guarantees that same key will always hash to single number. But two different keys can also give same number. So if you are relying on your key for partitioning, be careful. It can mix data for two different key values into a single partition. That's it for this session. In next session, we will cover some more details of Kafka producer APIs. So see you again. Thank you for watching Learning Journal. Keep learning and keep growing.